Let's see, Endeavour began the journey preparing for STS-130 when it landed at KSC on July 31st. That was from STS-127, that was the last mission. And you can see here some of the operations for towing Endeavour and getting um, prepared for rolling into Orbiter Processing Facility 2. So once in the Orbiter Processing Facility, Endeavour undergoes the maintenance operations in preparation for the next flight. What you're, uh, what you're seeing on the video here is actually the forward reaction control system. We actually had a couple of thrusters that we needed to remove and replace this flow. So um, you can see some of the inspections are in work. Re this forward reaction control system, if um, you're not aware, is actually what the thrust where the thrusters are housed, and that uses that's for on orbit maneuvering while um, while in orbit, and that's after the main engines. You can't use the main engines anymore. So we use these thrusters to pin to maneuver us. One of the other major operations that uh, we did was working with the removal and replacement of the boom. And this was actually just to do some inspections that we have to do every other flight. And the boom is the orbit boom sensor system, what we use to inspect the shuttle while it's in orbit, correct? That's correct. While we're on orbit, we actually do two inspections. Um, and, and the boom is just an extension of the arm that we use to wrap around to the belly of the, of the vehicle and look for the thermal protection system, look and make sure everything is checked out and make sure that the, the, or the TPS is ready for reentry. So this is a great tool. It's actually, as you can see, the Canadi or Canada uh, logo on there. It's a multinational effort that we use to get the shuttle ready um, for flight and to, in preparation for the mission. The Canadians have done a lot of the robotics work, and obviously the space station's robotic arm has also been made by a Canadian company. So that's correct. The same when they made the boom. That's exactly right. So you're doing inspections on the inspection boom. Exactly. Okay. We're doing <laughs> additional inspections on the boom. And, and once, I'm sorry. And once we're, um, while we're working on Endeavour, getting Endeavour ready for the next flight, we're actually working in concert with an external tank and the solid rocket boosters and getting all of that prepared and ready for the next next flight. So um, Endeavour, the external tank was actually delivered from Louisiana in late October, that was October 24th. And the ET, is, or the external tank, as you can see, arrived by barge and it's offloaded and, um, and lifted into the vehicle assembly building in the checkout cell. And about after a month of being in the checkout cell and undergoing inspections in, um, in the checkout cell, is actually lifted and in, in, uh, prep, in preparation for a mate with the solid rocket boosters. Now the solid rocket boosters have already been uh, stacked in, on the mobile launcher platform. And as you can see in some of this video footage here where the external tank is lowered in between the solid rocket boosters. And once, uh, uh, once mated with the solid rocket boosters, then it goes checkout and ready for, um, for the orbiter mate operations. Which is and speaking of what we're seeing right now. <laughs> exactly. About 130 days of um, time in the orbiter processing facility, Endeavour was ready to roll over to the vehicle assembly building. And that's about a typical flow length. 130 days is about um, nominal. We go from 110 to 150 days. And uh, this process of rolling Endeavour over to the vehicle assembly building takes about an hour. And you can see it's a, it was on an orbiter transporter system. So it doesn't roll over on its own wheels. It's on a transporter system. And then once in the vehicle assembly building, it's attached to a sling, a lifting sling. And they use a couple of cranes to lift the Endeavour up to the, about to the top of the vehicle assembly building in preparation for mate. And this mate operation that we're um, in the vehicle assembly building takes um, a couple of days. And on a typical basis, we stay in the vehicle assembly building for about seven days for the checkout, for the mate, out, um, mate with the external tank and check out of the vehicle, make sure everything is working properly. But this was a, a unique flow for us. We actually stayed in the vehicle assembly building for um, for about 25 days. Was, that's, not, that's not typical. But we did have the holiday break in there. So we had about two weeks uh, of the holidays where we gave the team um, a break during the holidays. And... Uh, like you knew it was going to be a very busy year, so the team's uh, got a little extra time off. Before. And yeah, that's exactly right. We um, we did want to try to give across the space um, the space center as a whole. We tried to give all of the teams off for about two weeks during um, doing preparation for this next year. And as you can see in this video, the orbiter is actually being lowered, and um, the mate process is undergoing. And once uh, back from the holidays. On January 6th, Endeavour rolled out to, and the Space Shuttle vehicle rolled out to Pad A. 
And if you recall, back in early January, we did have some very chilly weather. Um, and it was very unusual for uh, us in Florida. We had a cold snap for a couple of weeks. But we did take some extra precautions to make sure Endeavor and the people that were working out there were uh, kept warm. And uh, it, was, uh, it was chilly, but everybody survived. And, and it, was, uh, it was a good operation that day. I don't know whether it's coincidental or, or ironic or more both, but uh, tonight's going to be supposed to be a little chilly as well. Not anywhere near the temperatures we saw in early January, but uh, that's what that's what we're hearing. It's going to be a little chilly tonight. Seems so. good symmetry then, I guess. Yes, we want to keep it chilly all, <laughs> all January, or February. So we spent about a month out at Pad A. Some of the major operations that we did were powering up the vehicle, loading the hypergolics and uh, Endeavor, and doing some crew training as well.